This recording we're going to look at how the learning curve was examined in a past exam question, particularly summer 19 question 3. So you can see here this is Galvin Industrial Ireland. If we look at the requirements first, part A and B was to do with interest rate risk. So 6 and 6, 12 marks. So we'll cover that in a separate recording. But you can see this is what we call now a combined question where you had roughly half of it was finance. But then you had part C and D for 9 marks was on learning curve. Now learning curve was new for the first time in summer 2019 so it was examined relatively straightforwardly and uh, we'll, we'll talk you through what more complications you might get as well. So they ask you calculate the total hours and the total labour cost. So watch that, that's where the examiner is put in bold. You'll lose marks if you don't give both. If there's no learning curve or if there's an 80% learning rate or 80% learning curve for the first 64 oil filters. So five marks for calculations and four marks then two by two for two practical problems associated with the learning curve he should consider before deciding to apply it. So again, you can see there, while one of the hardest areas the syllabus is interest rate risk is 12 marks, you get nine marks for a nice learning curve question and five of those are calculations for a narrative. So narrative is important as is knowing the whole syllabus. The learning curve is quite new, examined on a couple of the interim assessments as well that you can go back and revise. But just because it's come up in interim assessments doesn't rule it out for the main exam. In 2019, it came up on both the January interim assessment and the summer exam. So it doesn't preclude it coming up on both. So if we go back to the question, we're told the company specialises in the production of oil filters and it's currently in the process of moving from its base in Dublin to a new office and factory complex in Cork. And again, the first part of that is how they're going to finance the new development and the interest rate risk associated with it. So we're not necessarily too interested now. What we're interested now is, well, what about the last part here that the Managing Director Paul Harris received a complaint from a new customer, but an important client, about the cost of orders. And he's essentially found out that they use the same labour cost regardless of the quantity used. And he reckons after he attended a cost sem seminar, he should be using Learning Curve. So he's given you information about a new recently launched oil filter, the Aero, which is the question is about. It takes 10 hours to make the initial um, Aero filter. And the skilled labour cost is 20 euro. So they want to figure out what would the price be for an order of 64 filters with no learning curve and what would it be for an 80% learning curve. So we'll just do our little calculations out. I've taken the learning curve formula that we're going to use in a second. But C part 1 initially. C part 1 is no learning curve. Now, if it was no learning curve, it is simply going to be 64 filters, 10 hours per filter, uh, and 20 euro per hour. So that's all it's going to be. 64 times 10 times 20, 12,800 would be the cost if you applied no learning curve. Now, that's quite a simplistic approach because you're thinking if this is a new oil filter, of course, at the start, it's going to take a bit longer to produce it. But as you go along the learning curve, you should get more and more efficient. So there should be some benefit and improvement. So that's what they're trying to do with the second part is with an 80% learning curve. So what the 80% learning curve, this is important, is as the output doubles, the average time or the cumulative average time, the cumulative average time to make the filters falls to 80% of the previous average. Now that's quite wordy, but the easiest thing to do is let's see it as a table. Let's see what that actually means and let's come to an answer. So we're going to look at tabular format first how you'll do it in the table, and then we'll also show you how you can use the formula as well. So it's a good tutorial to understand learning curve. But that's the key rule here is as the output doubles. So that's the rule. It's not as it goes to one and a half or anything like that. It must double, and we're talking about the average time, not the total time, the average time per unit. So we'll talk here the cumulative output, the average time, and then we'll talk about the total time. So usually give you a good idea of what's going on. So the first one, the cumulative output for one, the average time is 10 hours, and the total time then is 10, which of course is 10 times one. So that's just a relatively straightforward to start off. 
Now the cumulative output then as it doubles. So now you've made two units. So you make an extra one, you double it. The average time now is eight. Think about that. It's 80% of the previous average. So the total time is now 16, which is eight times two. So you need to understand this, how the learning curve works. It is a model, but it is an important one. The next one then is four. So if you make four units, that means your average time is going to be 80% of eight, which is 6.4. So you continue to go down in the learning rate and 6.4 times four is 25.6. So that's how you get your total time, 25.6 hours to make four filters. You then go to eight, 16, 32, and 64. So we can use the table here because this works nicely as a doubling. If they asked for 60 units, you couldn't use the table. We would have to use the formula approach. And we'll come back to that in due course as well. So we'll just finish this off. That's going to be 80% of the previous. That's going to be 80% of that previous. And so on. 80% and 80%. So the tabular method is probably the easier one to understand learning curve. Uh, and to get the key principles, it's probably longer to do it in the exam. So if you're at the exam, the simplest way is to use the formula because it's shorter and it works for every approach. So your total time here, 8 times 5.12. Move that across. And we'll show there 8 times 5.12. This will be 16 times 4.096. So just multiply that. So it takes about 65 hours. Then the same for the last two. And you can see the total time taken to make 64 filters. Total time for 64 filters is 167.77 hours, which at 20 euro an hour, because remember the, the price per hour doesn't change. It's the number of hours. That will mean the correct bill there should have been about three and a half thousand. Now compare that in euros to what the bill was up here, 128. No wonder the client is complaining because if this learning curve is actually correct, now this is an estimate, but if it is correct, you're dramatically overpricing. And if your competitor who is accounting for the learning curve, they're of course gonna price lower and you're gonna lose business. So it is important that you understand the principle of the learning curve. I'll just put in the last one so you'll see where they're coming from. So by the time you get to the 64th unit, the average time is taking you two and a half hours, just over, compared to 10 at the start. So it's a dramatic impact. The more you make the filters, the more improvement, the more efficient you're getting with your learning curve. But that can be done in the formula, which is a lot quicker. But it's easy to understand here, but there is a formula, and that formula works for these figures. 2, 4, 8, 16, the normal doubling, or it could get you 15, it could get you 7, which the table can't. So the formula is much more flexible. And it says here, and I'll bring it down just for ease of use. It says the cumulative average time, so that means the formula will get me this column, the average time, it doesn't get me the total time, will be a function of the cost of the time for the first unit. So our A here is equal to 10 hours. Our X we're working towards 64 units. Now remember, it's open book exam, you bring these in with you. And your, your B, your learning index, is going to be log 0.8 divided by log of two, which is, so log zero point, that should be log 0 0.8 divided by the log of two. That's just, you can make sure you can do those in your formula because you won't obviously have Excel. So make sure you can do them in your calculator. Have you the log function and can you get minus 0.32? So your cumulative average time will be equal to 10 times 64 to the power of minus 0.32193. And that means you will get your cumulative time to be, if we just do it out, so you can try not round because you'll get exactly the same as the table then. And that gets you to 2.62144, 2 
which if you look back, that 2.62144 is the same as this one up here. So the formula and the table, the tabular approach, are the exact same. What you just have to make sure is that the formula approach is probably the easier one, and it works for every volume, not just the, the nice doubling. Because this is the first year of the learning curve in the summer 2019 paper, they probably went a small bit easier to help you through. But just make sure you can do it either way. So your answer there for C part 2, the cost will be 3355, which is significantly lower than the 12 -8. Now, just to note, there are different ways that the examiner can ask learning curve. So, for example, they might ask you, how long did it take to make the second unit? Well, the, this you can read from the table. It took you 10 hours to make the first unit. It took you 16 hours in total to make the two units. So, this is one plus another one. So, it means it took you six hours to make the second unit. So you need to be able to do that. They could ask you, for example, what is the cost of the 64th unit? If you wanted to get the 64th unit, and this is covered all in Management Accounting Session 1, you need to get the total hours for 64 units, which we have, but then you need to go back and use the formula, what's the total hours for 63 units? And the difference between the total of 64 and 63 will give you the individual time for the 64th unit. So those are the kind of honours level questions where they might ask you, calculate the learning rate. So you, you're not given the 80%, you have to work back. Or they might ask you an individual time for an individual unit. All of those are covered in Management Accounting Session 1, and you need to go back over those. So that's the calculation element. And it's clear here the learning curve is important because you can dramatically overestimate the cost of the order otherwise. What you're also then asked is Part D for four marks two practical problems with the learning curve. Well, the first practical problem here is, how do you estimate what the learning curve is? Because we know, and this is applying your knowledge to the facts of the question, they've never used it before, because he's only heard about it in a seminar. So what is the learning curve? Because that can dramatically impact your result. So for example, just illustrate, if we use this formula again, and instead of using an 80% learning curve, let's use a 90%. Well, if we use 90%, A is still the same, X is still the same, but B now becomes equals the log of 0.9 divided by the log of 2. So it becomes minus 0.152, and your average time then becomes log 0.9 divided by log 2. becomes 5.31441. So it's double the average of what the average time would have been for 80%. So remember, a 90% learning curve means you're learning less quick because it means you're only falling to 90% each time, whereas the 80% the the learning curve is actually a more severe learning curve. You're learning quicker and quicker. But that's a key point that if you get that estimate wrong, you have a completely different answer. 5.31441 times 64 would mean you have 340 hours, whereas here they have only 167. So it would be double the order. So one of the first practical problems you have to highlight to Paul is that it's very sensitive to the assumptions that are used. Get that wrong and you'll come up with a wrong price. Second thing you might say here is uh, you're moving base. This is a good student will link it to the facts of the case. If you're moving from Dublin to Cork, is there going to be a stop in the learning? Is there going to be a change now that to have a learning curve, it must be a very labor intensive um, production process. If you're going to a new factory complex and that's automated, learning curve won't be relevant. So there are two very practical points about the level of the learning curve, because it's very sensitive to it. And if you are moving office, or moving factory, are you going from a very labor intensive, which learning curve is relevant, to a very automated factory setting where learning curve is not relevant? Because if it's automated, it's going to be the same no matter how many units you do, because that's how uh, the machine, the automa automation process works. But don't throw away those, give you two by two marks, and try and link it back to the facts of the question if at all possible.
right? So that was looking at management accounting session one, particularly in terms of learning curve. Very important one, only new since 2019. And go back and look at the management accounting session one, but also take a look at past interim assessment papers where it has been heavily asked. And it's also been asked relating to variances as well. So it can be asked standalone like this, or it can be embedded in a variances question.